Good afternoon. I hope I am audible and uh, welcome to this uh, third session of this uh, bridge course, Fundamentals of the Engineering Physics. In the previous lecture, we discussed about mainly the reference frame, then Newton's laws of motion, energy and momentum. So those aspects we discussed in the previous class. Now I'll continue uh, today. Uh, and the first topic is the Galilean transformation. Then what is this Galilean transformation? Um, if you remember in the previous class, I discussed about the inertial frame of reference and known inertial frame of reference. Inertial frame of reference are those where acceleration is zero. So whether the frame of reference is in the rest position or it is moving with a constant velocity. Both frames are the inertial frame of reference. Now suppose if I am looking at a particular event or a point or a particle from these two different frame of references. I am looking from frame S. I am also looking from the frame S prime to this particular uh, uh, to this particular point or particle at any particular instant of the time. So we can easily understand that the position coordinate of this event will be different. It will be different for the uh, frame of uh, reference S prime. It will be different for the frame S prime. Then how can we establish the relationship between them? We should use the coordinate from one frame and using them we can transform the coordinate into the another frame for the same particle or same event. So there are equations which provide the relationship between the Cartesian coordinates of two reference system and that is called the transformation equation. So if I know the position coordinate in one frame and I know these transformation equations, so using these transformation equations I can translate those coordinates into the coordinates for the second uh, frame of reference which is S prime. So those transformation equations are known as Galilean transformation equations. Okay, so now uh, let's have a look at this uh, Galilean transformation equation. We will try to derive those Galilean transformation equations. And here we have the, the situation. In this case here, as you can see in this picture, we have two different frame of differences, frame S and frame S prime. Frame S with coordinates X, Y, Z and frame S prime with coordinate uh, axis X prime, Y prime and Z prime. And the origin of the first frame is O and the origin of the second frame is O prime. Now, right now I am talking about the time T is equal to zero. And that is the time when two frames are exactly overlapping onto each other. But I know that this frame S prime is moving with some constant velocity. So the time when they are exactly overlapping onto each other, that time I'm calling t is equal to zero or t prime is equal to zero. t is the time in frame S and t prime is the time in frame S prime. But after some time, for example, after time t is equal to, uh, after t seconds or after t uh, units, the frame S prime is displaced by some distance. As you can see here that the frame S is at the same position while this frame S prime has displaced from its original position. And now there is a some distance between the frame S and frame S prime in the X direction. Please note that this frame S prime is moving only in the X direction. There is no change in the y direction. There is no change in the z direction. So we can say 
that there is no motion in the y and z direction only the x coordinate is changing it means there is a motion only in the x direction now suppose i have this particle p and i want to locate the position of this particle from these two different frames so if i consider the frame s and the corresponding position coordinates of this particle are x y z and t while this particle same particle has different position coordinates in the frame s prime which is x prime y prime z prime and t prime and here you can easily establish the connection between the x and x prime y and y prime z and z prime means if you can if you can say that the distance in the x direction of this particle is x in the frame s and the distance uh, in the x direction of this particle is x prime then how much distance is covered by the frame s prime we know that the frame is moving with the uniform velocity v and the time difference is t because right now t uh, here we have a t seconds and we started from t is equal to 0 seconds so the time difference is t so the total distance covered uh, by the frame in that time will be vt so that distance is basically vt so i can simply say that x prime is equal to x minus vt while as i already said there is no motion in the y and z direction so y prime will be y and z prime will be z i hope this is clear now here i have discussed the thing in terms of the space coordinates x y z but apart from this space coordinates i can simply use the position vector and in the previous class i showed that this position vector is basically uh, is the is the is the essence from these three space coordinates because r is equal to xi plus yz plus zk so here everything is same whatever i have discussed here but this time i'm saying that there is a position coordinate from the origin of the first frame s to the particle p so this is your frame s which is not moving and this is your frame s prime which is moving with a constant velocity so i can draw two different position vectors one from the origin of the first frame frame s and that this vector is op and it is denoted by vector r so that is the position of the particle from the first reference from the rest frame and then uh, this uh, particle i can draw the second position vector which is r prime and that is from the origin of the frame s prime to that particle and then there is another uh, 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 this uh, this another aspect that the frame has displaced by some distance x uh, oh, sorry o o prime you can say and that o o prime we have already estimated that is equal to vt so to define the <clears throat> the particle in the space of course we should know the three position coordinates and the time but we can simply write in terms of r and t because r uh, is having the information from all these position coordinates and then time so now if i apply the simple geometry here then i can say that vector op this vector is equal to vector o o prime this vector plus vector o prime p and i know that this vector op is the position vector of the particle from the first reference from the rest frame of reference and o prime p is the second position vector i mean the position vector of the particle in the second uh, frame of reference s prime and plus o o o o prime is basically the vt so that is vt i'll just uh, uh, rearranging the terms here so then r prime will be r minus vt 
but that equation is in terms of the position vector using this equation i can write simply the equation in the space coordinates and that i have already discussed here so we know that the frame is moving only in the x direction so the first equation will be x prime is equal to x minus vt and we know there is no motion along the y and z direction so there will be no change in the y and z coordinates they will be same in both frame of references so y prime is equal to y and z prime is equal to z but this is not i mean space coordinates are alone are not enough we have to uh, include the information of the time also and let's assume that t is the time in rest frame and t prime is the time in the um, um, uh, this uh, 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 frame s prime which is moving with constant velocity but we know that this t prime must be equal to t because time is independent of any particular frame of reference at least for galilean transformation we can keep it like this but we know that the time is the fourth dimension as per the theory of relativity but that aspect we are not including here because we are bound to this syllabus and we are discussing the galilean transformation and as per galilean transformation that t prime is equal to t it means the time is independent of any particular frame of reference so what i have so far i have this x prime is equal to x minus vt that's the first equation y prime is equal to y second equation z prime is equal to z third equation and t prime is equal to t fourth equation i have these four equations and these four equations are known as galilean transformation equations i can use these equations to transform the coordinates from one frame of reference to another frame of reference or vice versa and that we will see in the coming slides okay so now you can just think about it that i am looking at the same particle or at the same at the same event from two different frame of references one is s another is s prime but the event is same or the particle or point is same or physical law is same so it doesn't matter from which frame of reference i am looking it should be invariant for an example if i look for the length whether i am looking from frame s or frame s prime the length between these two coordinates must be the same so we have to check the invariancy of various parameter because we have derived this galilean transformation equation now using these equations we will check whether various fundamental parameters are invariant under this transformation or not so let's take the first parameter which is the length so situation is same we have two different frames frame s and frame s prime and there is a road and that road has length l and when it is in the inertial frame and assume the end coordinates of this road is x1 and x2 then what will be the length length will be simply x2 minus x1 and coordinate minus last coordinate minus first coordinate in the one dimension just for simplicity i'm just taking the one dimensional piece now at the same road i'm looking from the second frame of reference uh, which is s prime and that s prime is moving with the uniform velocity so surely the position coordinates will be different so i am saying the end coordinates are x1 prime and x2 prime in this frame of reference and i am calling this length as l prime and i have to establish this l prime is equal to l so let's call the length from the second frame of reference is l prime the 
position coordinates or end coordinates of the road is x1 prime and x2 prime so in that case the l prime must be x2 prime minus x1 prime and i can convert that x prime into the x that this equation i know that x prime is equal to x minus vt so x2 prime can be written as x2 minus vt where v is the velocity of this frame that's a uniform velocity similarly i can write this x1 prime as x1 minus vt and if you will solve it this vt will cancel again you will get this x2 minus x1 and that is basically your length l so l prime is equal to l so what we will say that the distance between two points or length is invariant under the galilean transformation doesn't matter from which frame of reference you are looking for the length it will be invariant now the second important parameter is the acceleration whether this acceleration is invariant or not so we have again i mean the same condition is same we have these two frames s and s prime and both are inertial frame here i know that inertial frame uh, it has zero acceleration but let's assume that it has acceleration a and that is zero we know but we have to establish if the acceleration uh, a prime is there in the second frame of reference that must be equal to the a and here i have used this equation that i have derived for this position Uh, uh position vector r prime is equal to r minus v but this time i am using v as a capital v and this capital v is showing the velocity of the frame s prime now if i take the time derivative then it will be d r prime over dt um, is equal to d r prime over dt minus v that's very simple you all know and then this is the time derivative of this position so it will be the velocity of the particle in the velocity of the particle in the first uh, sorry in frame s prime and dr over dt will be the velocity of the particle in the first frame s and that is the v capital v is the velocity of the frame s prime again if i will take the time derivative then dv prime over dt is dv over dt minus 0 v is uniform it's a constant velocity and you know the time derivative of the constant value is always zero so it will be zero and i say i can see here that a prime is equal to a so whatever acceleration the particle is having in the inertial frame s it will be having the same acceleration in the frame s prime which is moving with the constant velocity so i can say again that the acceleration is also invariant under the galilean transformation so so far we have discussed about this length uh, invariance and this acceleration invariance so now let's take the the newton second law because not only the parameters physical laws should also be invariant so here i i want to check the transformation of newton second law of motion because the laws of physics to be the same in all inertial reference frame so we have these two frames frame s and frame s prime and let's write the newton second law in the frame s prime so i am using this prime to write the newton second law in frame s prime so the force f prime is equal to m prime a prime and you know that a prime is the acceleration in the frame s prime so i can simply write it d to x prime over dt prime and then i can also write it m prime d over dt prime into dx prime over dt prime 
Now this x prime is the position coordinate of the particle in the frame s prime, and I can convert it to the x as you can see here x minus v t. So I can simply put the value here x minus v t. So what will happen? This dx over dt will tell us the velocity in this x direction, while this v is the velocity of the frame s prime. So it will be v. But again, we have this another d over dt. So this term d v x minus v over dt. Then again, I will differentiate it with respect to the time. So it becomes m d v x over dt minus d v over dt. And again, this v, the the velocity of the frame s prime, and that is uniform. So this d v over d t will be zero. And again, I am getting m d v x over d t, and that is basically d v x over d t is basically the acceleration. So it it is basically the force in the first frame or in the rest frame. So you can see. The force in the rest frame is exactly equal to the force in the frame s prime. So Newton's second law of motion is also invariant under Galilean transforms. Here I have derived only for this x component. You can say, but you can do the same thing with the position vector, and you will get the same result. I hope uh, this is. clear now let's move to the next topic which is the fictitious force fictitious force or pseudo force and this pseudo force is an important consequence of the known inertial frame of reference we know that newton's laws they are valid in the inertial frame of references but when there is a motion in the known inertial frame of reference it means the frame itself has some acceleration then there will be some pseudo forces so these pseudo forces are there in the known inertial frame of reference and you can say that uh, they uh, they are applied to the objects to satisfy newton's laws of motion we have to uh, correct uh, the the force body diagram and then we will see that by including this pseudo force uh, the things are in the right direction so this pseudo force is basically m mass of the object and a acceleration of this known inertial frame and this minus sign is showing that it works always in the opposite direction if your frame is accelerating in the upward direction the pseudo force will work in the downward direction so always pseudo force pseudo force works in the opposite direction it is applied to the known thermal uh, sorry known initial inertial frame of references sometimes we call it as a inertial frame although i mean the need of this pseudo force arises because of the use of non inertial now here let's take this very simple but very effective example to understand this pseudo force and this example is the apparent weight in the lift so suppose uh, let me describe the situation that uh, Uh, we have two different observers observer 1 o1 and observer 2 o2 this observer o2 is inside the lift and they have some block of mass m with the weighing machine so they can measure the weight of that block in different conditions so and this lift is an accelerating with an acceleration of a so we'll discuss two different cases case first when lift moving upward with an acceleration a and case second when lift is moving downward with an acceleration a and in both cases we will see the perspective of each observer in case 1 we will see how the observer 1 is seeing 
and what is the observation of observer 2 relative to the observer 1. So in both cases we will see what these observers are seeing. So let's take the first case when lift is moving upward and what is the conditions and with respect to the observer O1. So this what this observer O1 is seeing because lift is moving in the upward direction with an acceleration A and there is a mass M inside the lift. So how many forces are there? So he is seeing three different forces. Because mass is there, one force Mg is working downward and there must be a normal force in the opposite direction and the lift is also accelerating so there must be an acceleration in the upward direction. So that is the force body diagram as per the observer O1. So then if I will write the equation as per observer O1, so I can simply write N minus Mg is equal to Ma or N is equal to Mg plus Ma. And then N is equal to Mg plus A. So as this weighing machine, it measured the normal reaction acting on it. The weighing machine will show the reading corresponding to N is equal to Mg plus A that much weight will be displayed by the weighing machine. So that is the perspective of observer A1. Then what is the perspective of observer 2? What he is observing? Because observer 2 is in the lift itself and the mass is also in the lift and he is not feeling any acceleration there because both objects are moving with the same axis. So what he will see? He will see only two different forces, the force Mg in the downward direction and then force N in the upward direction and he will say that the, the weight will be corresponding to Mg as per this weighing machine. So but this mass of the block is same, why we are getting two different uh, uh, readings. We are getting these two different readings because we this observer 2 he hasn't considered this known inertial frame because the lift is moving with some acceleration and that is not the inertial frame. And we know that in the known inertial frames Newton's laws are not valid. So to have the correct answer, we have to include the pseudo force. Now the modified force body diagram, because now we have included the pseudo force also. And I already told you that the pseudo force always works in the opposite direction. The lift is moving in the upward direction. So surely the pseudo force will work in the downward direction. So this pseudo force is equal to Ma because the mass of the block is M and acceleration of the, uh, the lift is A. So this pseudo force will be Ma. Now if I want to write the four, uh, if I want to write the equations, then it will be N minus Mg minus Ma because in downward we have two forces, in upward we have one forces and that must be equals to Z. So then N is equal to Mg plus Ma and then N is equal to Mg plus A. So now we are getting the same answer as we are seeing here. So when things are in the known inertial frame of reference, we have to include that pseudo force. Similarly, we can discuss about this case 2 when this lift moving downward with an axis. Now, with respect to this observer O1, who is outside of the elevator. So he will see three different forces, this Mg in the downward direction, normal, and this time this force is in the uh, downward direction the, because the lift is moving downward. So then if I want to write the equation as per this force body diagram, it will be Mg minus N 
is equal to m a and then n is equal to m g minus m a or n is equal to m g minus a. So that will be the reading on the going machine. Now what observer two sees again the same problem because he is in the lift and he thinks uh, I mean he as per his observation there is only two forces. One is m g working downward. Another is n in the upward direction. So that weight will be corresponding to this normal reaction and is equal to mg. But that is not correct. That is not correct because we are getting the different normal uh, force here which is mg minus a. So again we know the problem because we haven't considered the pseudo force. Now this time the pseudo force will work in the upward direction because the lift is moving in the downward direction. So now this is the corrected force body diagram. The force mg working downward, the normal force in the up direction and also the pseudo force in the up direction. Now if I write the equation then it will be mg minus n minus ma must be 0 and then n is equal to m g minus a. So that is the normal and now it is same that we are getting here. So every non-inertial frame of reference we have to consider the pseudo force. Okay, so now this is the very simple uh, problem I have just included here. And in this problem, uh, there is a block of mass m and that is blo the block is resting on this wave of angle theta and this wave itself accelerating in the minus x direction. So it is accelerating, so it is not a inertial frame of reference. So what we have to calculate? what is the minimum value of the acceleration so that mass m falls freely and you know for any free fall the normal component must be the zero only this gravity should work on the object this is the definition of the free fall so for the block to fall freely there should not be any normal reaction between ways and block so that n must be zero so if I want to draw this force body diagram for this particular problem, this is, let's call this is x direction, this is y direction, and we have this block of mass m. So there must be a force mg exactly in the downward direction. Now I can resolve the component of this force. So this component is mg cos theta, while this horizontal or the component in x direction is mg sin theta but you know that this wave is moving in this direction sorry the wave is having acceleration in this direction in the minus x direction so there must be a pseudo force in the plus x direction so here we have this pseudo force and that is equal to ma now this ma can be resolved into two different component this component in the y direction is m a sin theta while the component of this force in the x direction is m a cos theta. Now if I want to write the force equation in the y direction because here I am interested in the free fall of this object so it must be n plus m a sin theta because these two forces are in the up direction while this mg cos theta is in the downward direction. But we know that n must be 0 for free fall. So then I can say m a sin theta is equal to mg cos theta and a is equal to g cos theta. So that is the value of the acceleration for the free fall. Okay. Um, uh, after discussing all these uh, different frame of reference, inertial, uh, non-inertial, and then uh, discussion on this uh, pseudo forces, 
now let's take one more type of the frame that is called the rotative frame. So far what we have discussed, either we have a fixed frame of difference or the frame is moving with the constant velocity or it is moving with non-uniform velocity. But here I have the rotating frame. Now let's have a look at the first picture which is saying that these two frame of references first frame with the coordinate axis x y and z while the another frame with the coordinate axis x prime y prime and z prime and this second frame is rotating with an angular velocity omega along z axis along z axis so it is it is very well clear that this z and z prime will be the same for both frame of differences. Now suppose you have a particle in the rotating frame. The particle is here and that particle is attached with the coordinate x prime. It is fixed, it is not moving. So what I can say that this particle is attached with one coordinate axis x prime and it is fixed, it is not moving. So that particle is not moving in the rotating frame. So that particle is completely fixed in the rotating frame. But the frame itself is moving. And if the frame is moving, the particle is fixed at this x axis. So if I will look at this particle from the frame S which is fixed, I will see that this particle is performing the circular motion. And the radius of this circle is x prime. So the position coordinate of this particle is x prime 0 0 because it is always fixed on the x axis there is no y component, there is no z component. So you can assume a situation at t is equal to 0 when these two frame of references are exactly overlapping onto each other. But after some time, because this second frame is rotating, so he the frame axis has displaced. And that situation you can see here. Originally, they were overlapping, so these x, y, because the motion will be in the x, y plane only. So I'm completely excluding this z axis. Z axis is same for both frame of differences. So in time t, the, the position of this particle has displaced by some amount, and I know that the rotation is omega, and I know the time, so this angle will be omega t. Now I can write the position. Now I can uh, uh, estimate the position, velocity and the acceleration of the particle in these two frames. So what I can see here that if I want to draw the component from this point to the x-axis and to the y-axis, so I will get the x component and y component of the particle in the fixed frame. And that is the horizontal component. This is the vertical component. So it will be x is equal to x prime cos omega t. Similarly, y is equal to uh, x prime sine omega t and z is equal to 0. So these are the position coordinates of the particle in rest frame. Now the position coordinate of the particle in the rotating frame because I already told you that the particle is fixed here, it is not moving. So that distance is fixed but this y and z component is zero because it is always on the x axis. Your whole frame is moving. So this in the rotating frame x prime is fixed, y prime is zero and z prime is also simple. 
So now I have the position coordinate in rest frame as well as in the rotating frame. Just by taking the time derivative of these position coordinates, I can calculate the components of the velocity of the particles in these two frames. So just take the time derivative, uh, Vx is equal to dx over dt, so it will be minus omega x prime sin omega t. Vy is dy over dt is equal to uh, omega x prime cos omega t and Vz is equal to dz over dt is zero. The velocity in the rotating frame is zero. All three component, V prime x, V prime y, and V prime z, all three components of the velocity of this particle in the rotating frame is zero. And the reasoning is very well clear because your particle is fixed in the rotating frame. You can assume like that you are sitting on this particle and you are moving. So there is no change in the position of the particle. That is why the velocity in the rotating frame is zero. Now, if I want to calculate the acceleration of this particle in these two different frames, that can be obtained by taking the time derivative of the corresponding velocity. So that Ax will be dVx over dt. So again, we are differentiating it with respect to the time. So it will be omega square x prime cos omega t. Ay will be omega square x prime sine omega t and Az is zero. While simply the acceleration in all three directions, A prime x, A prime y, A prime z, again it will be zero. Now if you look at this acceleration in the rest frame, the x component and the y component, they have this minus sign. It means that acceleration is directed towards the center. And that is basically the centripetal acceleration. Because we know from this problem that the particle is moving on the circular motion as this rotating frame is moving with an angular velocity omega. So we have the circular motion. So and that is why this acceleration comes as the centripetal acceleration. So this problem, the, the coordinates in the rotating and rest frame, when we are having two different frame of differences, that is very simple problem I have discussed. We may have more complex problems. For example, the particle is not fixed in this frame of reference. It is also moving within the rotating frame. Uh, then we have to consider the velocity and the other parameters so the solution will be complex in that case. But here I have discussed very simplest case to know the various coordinates of the particle in rest frame and the rotating frame. Now this, uh, we know that the, the particle does not move with respect to the rotating frame. It is fixed in the rotating frame. But the whole frame of reference is moving about the z-axis with an angular velocity. So in terms of vector notation, this omega is written as omega with the unit vector in the z-direction, uz. And if I want to calculate the velocity of the particle in the fixed frame, that tangential to the, the circle in the xy plane, the tangential velocity. And that we know V is equal to dr over dt. And that is basically the cross product of angular velocity and the, the distance from the center or you can say the, the radius. Just one second. Okay, now using this velocity, we can estimate the acceleration uh, just by taking the time derivative of the velocity. So A is basically dV over dt and that is we know that V is 
omega cross r so then this v omega is basically constant because the frame is rotating with the constant uh, angular velocity so it will be omega cross del r over del t and this del r over del t is again velocity so i can simply replace this del r over del t by this velocity omega r so the acceleration is omega cross omega cross r so what you can see we have also shown here and we are also showing here that this particle is not moving in the rotating frame but still we are getting the acceleration in the fixed frame now here uh, uh, the next uh, topic is the coriolis force if a body is moving with the linear velocity v in a non inertial frame and that non inertial frame is rotating with an angular velocity v then the force acting on the particle in the rotating frame is f prime is equal to f minus 2m omega cross v minus m omega cross omega cross r this first term 2m omega cross v is the coriolis force it acts at the right angle to the axis of the rotation and the velocity of the particle in the rotating frame while the second term m omega cross omega cross r is the centrifugal force and it is always directed away from the center so when there is a linear when there is a motion in the particle in the non inertial rotating frame then we have two different types of the fictitious force or pseudo force one is the coriolis force another is the centrifugal force the coriolis force acts on a particle in the motion whereas this centrifugal force acts on a particle at rest so here we know that the earth also rotates uh, on its own axis so we can consider earth as a rotating non inertial frame and suppose there is a body on the surface of the earth and that body is in the motion with respect to the earth it's not fixed but there is a motion so then this coriolis force will work on the where v is the velocity of the body with respect to the problem is we have this mass of 0.1 kg that is moving with linear velocity of 2.5 meter per second normal to the axis rotation in the rotating frame of reference the mass is kept at a distance of 0.2 meter from the axis of rotation we have to determine the coriolis force and this centrifugal force we know the coriolis force is minus 2 m omega v we can calculate this omega that is v upon r the velocity is given which is 2.5 meter per second while this r because the particle is at a distance of 0.2 meter from the axis of the rotation so we can consider that distance as the radius of the particle so it will be 0.2 so omega comes as 12.5 radian per second and then coriolis force will come as minus 6.25 newton and centrifugal force comes as 3.125 newton so i'll stop here today and uh, we'll continue uh, this discussion in the next class so that's all thank you very much